Hello and welcome to Vital Shifting Stories. To give that frequently asked questions about vital shifting a context, I prefer to share my own stories as I respect the privacy of my clients and I am very easy to open myself and, and share these stories and we can figure out individually or collectively how they resonate with you. So, stories of vital shifting. In this first video, we established the meaning, we established the three points of vital shifting. And in these stories, I will share with you the three points of vital shifting. So, always there is an experience or a moment where we go, ah, where we go like, oh, something is not the same as it is outside. Where we come to a realization or reflection of self that doesn't match. And in our life, we have this maybe more often than we recognize. I went deep within to look at these moments at these experiences that pushed me to make a choice and I want to share with you all the choices so that you can see where it took me because it was not always that I would go on a vital shifting journey especially of course in my younger years which doesn't mean that in my younger years I did not go through intense shifting. So, let me begin. Let me take you to the little boy, the little Patrick, exploring the forest. My mother was an apist, so she had her bees far out in the countryside and um, staying in a camper, sleeping there for the weekend. She took care of the bees. And I was able to roam around and really open up my whole consciousness. I would be able to speak with trees and fairies, with nature. Indigenous people always called me, obviously not in the context where I was, but the Inca, the Toltec, Native Americans, the Hawaiians, the Kahuna, the Maori, the, Indi the Aboriginals, they were always with me. It's like I had a constant conversation with this indigenous wisdom and nature and how they interacted with me. And as I grew older, I wanted to share these stories and I wanted to write them down. And you can imagine what happened. So that shift inside of me was like, wow, there is another world. It's not only going to school and play and do all of this. There is another world and this world is really real to me. But you can imagine what happened when I shared this. This guy has a lot of fantasy. This guy is maybe even a little bit crazy. So when we have that shift that we recognize something, a different right, reality, a different dimension, a different way of what seems to be real in our world. If you share it and if you recognize it, you have a choice what you're going to do with it. So, as I said, my experience was then, ah, this guy is a bit out. There is only one reality and this is it. There is no different dimensions, nobody's talking to you, there's no fairies. So what you do? You need to make a choice. You cannot stay in this kind of space in between forever. As a youngster, I decided it's true to me. I decided no matter what you guys are saying, I know because I feel it. It's true. 
so my shifting journey at this time was in a way living in two different realities. I still developed my intuitive world, the different dimensions, my connectedness with nature, with animals, with fairies, with indigenous people, but only in my inner world. I started to play like movies in the night. I couldn't sleep because it kept me awake. And I was engaging with maybe what you would call my imaginary friends. On the outside, I was trying to be normal, whatever normal was considered in this world that I lived in at this time. And I became a bit of a pleaser. If you want it that way, well, then it's that way. So my shifting journey was not to bring my inner truth and my realizations together. My shifting journey was to live literally in two different worlds. No, I didn't become schizophrenic. No, I didn't become bipolar on no level because I was very clear of these different worlds, these different dimensions, these different realities, whatever you want to call it. So the journey began being just very conscious what is acceptable in an external world and what they understand and what they don't. But it didn't stop me from going further. So this is the first story. The moment of shift where I had these amazing connections, where I was able to listen to wisdom from the indigenous to the journey that I chose at the time based on my, my choice. The second shifting moment that came, living in Jamaica as a very young man, my early 20s, I loved swimming and, 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 and the most important and most beautiful experience was swimming in the morning for sunrise. If you by any chance are familiar, it doesn't look like it looked when I was in my early 20s, but nevertheless, it's still there, just beside the airport in Montego Bay, where I lived at this time. There were a few little hotels and a beautiful beach. I would swim in the morning for a long time. I would swim out like a kilometer or something like that. And the first time I would swim and the sun would rise over the ocean, I had a shift. I had a shift in the reality in the sense that I recognized, I realized that I was one with the sun that now I understand is a symbol of tea, the source of light, and with the universe. This was the first time I went like, wow, there is a oneness happening. I'm not alone. I'm, I'm like hugged by the universe. This is a shift in consciousness. And I would imagine, I would say now in hindsight, it changed my whole life. Did I make a choice at the time? Not too much. I wasn't living in that kind of consciousness, but I had a shift in consciousness and I knew inside of me I was part of this light and the sun and what's behind it, the universe, I just knew it. And considering I was trying to be this normal guy and fit in and please, that experience of shift of course did bring a choice the choice I'm not alone this is all real I continue my journey I sense again in hindsight as I wasn't conscious of the 
shifting journey I went on. But I'm very clear that I had a, a different way of sensing connectedness and oneness. I became more conscious of, of connecting with nature, connecting with people. At that time, that shifting was unconscious and very clear. But it had such a huge impact on me that my whole way of relating and connecting shifted over time. I could speak with somebody on the street and have this amazing connection. And in a way that has stayed in my life. This is the second. The third shifting experience was when I read the Celestine Prophecy. Um, if you've seen the movie, maybe even more graphic or whatever we want to call it, when John is followed by the terrorists, and it's a matter of life and death. Either they're going to capture him and torture him, or they're going to kill him. And John was already of that experience and, and, and journey of synchronicity, of understanding the world through different eyes, and was already told, you need to open up. When I saw that, when I felt that, reading it at the first time, I was like, wow, this is true. I am not making it up. We can, we can step out of this reality. So you're seeing how from the little boy to the Celestine prophecy now, there's a little thread coming through. That reality that I was told was not real started to become more real. What was the shift from there that I choose to take? I feel that was the first moments that I start talking a little bit more, being a little bit more conscious in delivering my truth. And it was from that time on that people were listening to me. It was from that time on that my pe that people ask for my opinion, for my advice, for my message. It was at that time that people recognized that maybe I had some insights. So you see, no matter how conscious we take the journey out of the experience and the choice, it's happening. Vital shifting simply takes you into a more conscious, focused and clear journey. So yes, my fourth that I want to share with you is obviously the more conscious vital shifting journey. So here I was in the middle of my shamanic training, Mesa Carrier, out of the work of Dr. Alberto Vialdo, by a student of Dr. Alberto Vialdo. We are in the nature in New Zealand with a little group and we are going on a shamanic journey. The shamanic journey is specific, it's a soul retrieval. And I just knew I had access to this reality all the time. The story that unfolded that was in the wound of my soul was the story of an indigenous who was trained to become what we maybe call a shaman, an intuitive, whatever, a wisdom keeper and one that would break the rules because I was teaching the girls shouldn't have done that, they said. But of course, I maybe lived in a time and space where we learned that women were also wisdom keepers. And maybe I was one of those people who broke that concept of men are the sacred ones. The story is not important. It's about the shift that went through me and the aha moment. Again, this is real. 
Of course, naturally, in the in the soul retrieval, even as I practice it now with my clients, you learn the contracts you have made, you look at why you're here, you get your gifts, and you go on a 21-day journey. Of course, my journey is still on. I am still vital shifting. I'm still shape-shifting. The 21 days were actually only the beginning of this journey of bringing the realities and the dimensions together. Shining light into what's inside and how that can merge with our external world and reality. I am still on that shifting journey. I haven't stopped because it's my journey. And of course, funny enough now, according to many, we are living in a time of shifting from the third in the fifth dimension, going through the last bumps and dramas of the fourth dimension. When I heard the first time that the world and, and, and humans are shifting from the homo sapien, the men and women of the mind, into the homo luminous, the men and women of the light. I knew all my life, all my experiences in different dimensions and realities are true. And I'm here to help merging. I'm here to help with that shift as I am the shift as I get more and more experiences, shifting moments that allow me that choice to stay with it. Step by step more. So what is your story of shifting? What are your moments? What are the choices that you're making? And what journey you choose to go on? If it resonates, we have shifted our whole offerings. We have shifted our contributions. We are recording the stories of the spirit animals, what we call spirit medicine. We are looking at three to four gifts, treasures that an animal brings to you. And you get the classes that help you to go deeper. We offer personal classes to take you on a deeper journey of shifting whatever is necessary in your world. Or we go in classes that we have with five, seven, however many people on Zoom. This is our core at this moment for vital shifting systems. And within that, there's whatever comes, whatever fits into your world. So these are the stories and where the stories can take you of vital shifting. Don't miss the moments. Make the choices and go on that journey. If you want to go on vital shifting journeys with us or on your own or with somebody that resonates with you, it doesn't matter. Just do it. And we'll see you there. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being you. And thank you for listening to my stories in the context of vital shifting.